Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome back to another review. Up to date it's a rather mysterious locomotive that I bought on AliExpress and you know what that means. No, 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 there's no need for that, no, it's not necessary. No, it's just a bit of a random electric locomotive that was pretty cheap, that's all. And here it comes. Today's locomotive did come from AliExpress and it cost me $42, which equates to about £30, so it's very, very cheap. The surprising and slightly mysterious aspect to this is that it comes from a brand that you should be familiar with. So it is this, it is the Lima, I believe this is an E424, an Italian electric locomotive. And I wanted to learn more about this thing, so I did what I usually do. I googled the class, I googled the product number, nothing. Nothing on Hornby's website, Hornby own Lima. Nothing online, nothing on any of the retailers. It really is a complete mystery. The only thing I could find relating to this model was a load of second-hand ones from many years ago that are going for sort of over £100, or listed for over £100, not necessarily going for it. So what is the deal? How did these, they look like new models, end up on AliExpress? Express and seemingly nowhere else. Are they seconds? Were they just deemed not worthy to be sold by Hornby or Lima, whatever? I really don't know. It's a really, really strange one. I would guess that these are not intended to be serious models. I think they were back when they were first released sort of many, many decades ago. But looking at the packaging and obviously taking the price into account, that is probably not what's going on. Besides that though, I have no idea what to expect. So let's get this out. Let's find out what the 30 pound electric locomotive is like and see if we can figure out why this might not have appeared on Hornby's website. If indeed that's the case, who knows? Okay, let's find out. I suppose there is one thing that I haven't considered could this be a knockoff? I'm not entirely sure. It's very, very possible. I would say probably not, though, because everything about this seems a bit too feasible and a bit too logical for this to just be a nefarious knockoff. I mean, for instance, we know that this was a Lima release. Lima did produce this class of locomotive at one point. If this was just going to be a knockoff, why put Lima on the box? I mean, Hornby's name would be a better brand than that. And Hornby is on the box, as you can see, Hornby Italy. So, yeah, I suppose it could be a knockoff. I don't think it is, though. It seems a little bit too logical for that to be the case. Anyway, let me show you the end of the box. So this is HL2101. I didn't get very much joy when I searched for that, but obviously if you do look this one up and find a bit more, please do let me know. It's a Locomotor Electricio, <laughs> which I like. It's a Series E424, which I believe just means Class E424. And in livery, whatever that is, uh, XMPRFS. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. Maybe those who are familiar with the Italian railways will know a little bit more about this. However, there's very little else to see on the box. It does say that it's HO scale, so that's 1 to 87. Not the same as 00 in terms of scale, but the gauge should be about the same. So, with that, let's push this out. It's strange packaging as well. I've never actually seen this packaging before. And let's find out what this is like. First things first, it looks a lot smaller now that the box is apart, doesn't it? Second thing, it looks as though this has been opened. All the tape is broken, as you can see. I have not had this apart yet, and there was even tape on the box, which was broken as well. It's very, very strange. They're, not, they're no longer in stock on AliExpress either, which makes it even more mysterious. Anyway, let's take a look. So we have a sort of typical Hornby staple, actually, of cheap locomotives. It is a set of vacuum pipes. We've got four of them in there, still on a sprue, of course. So that's fair enough. You can fit those if you like. Let me just pull out the tray to begin with and just see if there's any paperwork, because I'll, I think I'll know whether this is genuine paperwork or not. Well, I hope I will. Uh, if it's instructions, uh, I don't think it is instructions. Looks genuine enough though, doesn't it? Can I find an English section? Safety notes, it says. Is that everything? Uh, no, on the back we've got about locomotive operation and maintenance. Lima Hobby Line, Juef Junior Line General. Okay, so it's nothing too specific. Yeah, I suppose, I'd, I'm, I'm thinking this is genuine. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but I don't think it's just a knockoff. Unless uh, somebody's stolen the tools and started producing them. I think that's fairly unlikely. Right, let's see what I got for £30 then. There is the locomotive. Let's, let's find out what we're dealing with here then. 
I mean, actually, this doesn't seem too bad, does it, for £30? I think now that I've started looking at some of the Mahano stuff, I'm a little bit less amazed than I might have been a couple of years ago. But yeah, this doesn't look too bad, does it? I mean, not for £30. It's actually pretty heavy. It's obviously all plastic. And we'll have to take a closer look at the paintwork because it does look a little bit dodgy in places. But I can also see some really quite impressive details. I mean, you've got the full pantographs and stuff, which look like they, the top parts, at least, are made of metal. So are they going to be connected up to be used? Surely not. Surely this has got to be just a glorified toy at this price. There's also evidence of lights on the ends. Are they going to work? Again, same answer, surely not at this price. With AliExpress, though, who knows, quite honestly, who on earth knows? So we'll take a closer look at this in just a second. First of all, though, here's a little bit of history on the class that I was able to find. So the E424 was a class of electric locomotives from the Italian railways introduced back in 1943, so it's earlier than I realised though the bulk of the class actually had to wait until the end of the Second World War before they were produced. The class ran on DC motors and drew 3,000 volts from the overhead catenary lines. They were capable of speeds of up to 75 miles per hour, and they had a tractive effort of 168 kilonewtons. The class was decommissioned quite recently, again more recently than you might imagine. 2008 was when they were gotten rid of, after an astonishing 65 years in service. So actually, it seems like there's quite a history behind this class. Let's take a close look at it then. So there it is then, up close and personal, the Lima E424. And this is becoming much, much more interesting than I expected it to be. The plot thickens. At the price point I paid, I was really expecting this to be a cheap, nasty toy. And don't get me wrong, this isn't made very nicely. Some of the moulding feels quite crude and rough. The paintwork is really quite sloppy. Look at the join between the cream and the green there. Ooh, that's a little bit of a mess. You've got quite a few paint bleed scenarios all over the model, particularly underneath the lights. Look at that, that's really quite shoddy. You've got glue marks around some of the separately fitted details. And then here on the roof, we have what looks like a literal bullet hole. <laughs> I don't want to know, I just don't want to know what's happened there. But yeah, it's not something that you'd expect on a more quality model, is it? That's for sure. To be honest, it's really not made very nicely, but equally, it's far from the cheap, nasty toy that I was expecting as far as features go. I mean, first of all, it's really heavy because it's got a die-cast chassis, a die-cast chassis for 30 quid. It weighs 350 grams, which is more than the Backman Derby lightweight, and it's more than quite a lot of steam locos I've reviewed as well. It's more than the Backman Patriots or the Hall. All of those had die-cast on them as well. So the weight is quite incredible. The mechanism, I've seen a little bit of the mechanism. I won't give anything away right now, but I, I can't wait to get the body off and see what's going on inside here because that has quite impressed me. And you've got quite a few extra details that I was really not expecting. I've already talked about the pantographs, which are metal. They're not just plastic. They're very, very ropey. I mean, you can just about get them to go up. I don't know if that's gone up all the way as it should have done. Uh, yeah bit on the wonky side, horribly made, but the fact that they're there, I mean, kudos, it's a bit of a bugger to get back into position again afterwards, but you can just about do it. So you've got that. You've got these separately fitted horns that are made of metal. You've got the wipers on the front and backs of the cab, separately fitted, that's quite something. I mean, they're horribly separately fitted, covered in glue. Don't get me wrong, I wouldn't recommend buying this. But that's unexpected. You've got metal buffers, not just cheap plastic ones, and they look actually half decent, don't they? I don't know yet whether we're actually going to have lights inside this thing. Maybe though, maybe. I mean, it seems quite heavy on features, so we will have to find out. The bogey detail is okay. I mean, you've got bits of stray paint here and there. Maybe that's just a chunk of paint that I'll be able to blow away. But yeah, the moulded detail looks all right, doesn't it? And you do have quite a few tampo prints on here, as you can see, whatever this thing is. It's very difficult to read that, actually. Two similar colours there, but maybe the close-up will allow you to read it. Quite a bit of print work on the buffer beams. Around the front, you've got the E424. Does the class have its own logo? That's pretty cool. That's printed onto the front there. Yeah, even though this isn't made very nicely, there is quite a bit of complexity here that I was not at all expecting. So, yeah, this has been a real surprise. Now, I've already seen something about the mechanism that I really like, so now I'm going to see if I can take the body off. I don't know what I'm going to find inside. Is it going to be DCC ready? Are there going to be lights? Are those pantographs going to be connected up? So many questions. Well, after I found out, I'll get it onto the track and I'll tell you all about it. 
So there it is, the Lima E424 down onto the track, ready for its first test. Man, curiouser and curiouser. You would not believe what I've just found inside this locomotive. Bear in mind, this cost £30. Prepare to be amazed. First amazing thing, it's all-wheel drive. As you can see, they are driven with a large gear. It looks a lot like the gears that Helgen use, and remember that because many aspects of this mechanism look almost identical to Helgen's. I'm not saying Helgen produced this or anything, but the design is definitely very, very similar. You have all-wheel pickup as well. You can just about make out the copper wiper pickups that go to the back of each wheel. Some wheels, that is one wheel per bogey, do have traction tyres fitted to them. I'm not keen on that. Why? <laughs> Why would they bother? This, this model weighs 350 grams. All-wheel drive, 350 grams. No reason at all for traction tyres to be fitted, so I might even look at getting rid of those. The couplings are not NEM couplings. They're the sort of European type hook and loop ones, and I think they are fixed permanently to the bogey, so if you wanted to change those for something else, you'd have a little bit of a job to do. Body removal, this was weird. I have had this before from Lima. You have to remove the buffers to get the body out, so I had to yank all of the buffers out. When the body was removed, this is what I saw. Now, this chassis is heavy die cast. This is a fully metal, heavy die cast chassis. Absolutely incredible. The circuit board, just like on Helgen Locos, is clipped into place above the motor. And look at the motor. This is an absolutely ginormous motor with two brass flywheels fitted to it. 30 pounds. How is this possible? That motor is connected to both of the bogies. And look, there's proper bearings on the bogies. This isn't really a very cheap, nasty mechanism although I should say the actual driving axles didn't have any bearings. We do have LED lights. There are light modules fitted to each end of the model and there's weird sort of light leakage tape stuck all over the place which was just covering them entirely so I've taken some of that off. I don't know what that was for. There is no DCC socket though which is a little bit strange so you can't easily chip this. That's a little bit of a pity. And the gauging was 100% spot on. I found 14.4 millimetres. That was the back to back for each axle. I mean how many times do I measure a really expensive supposedly high quality model and find that the gauging is too tight. Now this was 100% perfect on back to back and the front to back was just 0.15 millimeters too tight due to the thickness of the flanges which were quite thick at one millimeter. So there is the mechanism and remember 30 pounds folks. Think of how much Helgen charge for very much the same mechanism in a lot of their locos. Yeah it just puts it all into perspective. I should say that says nothing about the quality of the motor. I really don't know how well this is going to perform because we've seen already that this wasn't really assembled with the greatest of care and though the pantographs didn't appear to be connected unfortunately which is a pity and I've just upset that one now. Never mind, can't sort that out. Right, so how is this going to perform? I don't know whether it's a three or a five pole motor, it's just a sealed cam motor. Let's give it its first ever test and see how it runs. I am absolutely fascinated to learn how this one goes. Turning it up right now, hasn't been running, I should say. Oh, the lights are working. I can see them just flickering on. And the loco's moving. It's actually pretty nice and smooth. It's not crawling amazingly, but it, it's pretty good, isn't it, for 30 quid? Let's go at 50% speed. Yeah, it's not uh, it's not a speedy loco. That is 50% speed right there, which suggests that the, the loco really needs some running in or perhaps some lubricant. I did notice that when I was touching the wheels and stuff, a lot of them seemed quite stiff, so yeah, I don't know about that. Maybe it's just geared to run slowly. That's full speed right there. I think I would say there is something catching though, because if I cut it out, yeah, it stops almost dead. So yeah, I don't know. It, there is something a little bit rough inside here. I don't know if it just needs some lubrication, maybe. Well, it has cut out there. But the fact that this actually works and the fact that it has that kind of mechanism inside has blown me away very slightly. Let's have a look at the crawl again. This is a quite a high quality mechanism in a very poor quality loco. The crawl is not very good, at least not backwards. How is it forwards? Yeah, it's not great, not a great crawl, but um, maybe that will get better as the thing runs in. Maybe it won't. Maybe this thing has been in a box for 10 years for all I know, I really don't know. Perhaps it could do with some lubrication. No, not sure about that. 
Anyway, let's get this running, see how it gets on after 30 minutes in each direction, and let's test it around the layout, shall we? How very interesting. There you go, you can see the directional lighting there. I don't know, is this the best value loco I've ever owned? I don't know, because the poor quality and the, the lack of detail, I suppose, lets it down a bit. But in terms of the mechanism, which, I mean, it's, it's easy to get overexcited about the mechanism. Bear in mind, the performance obviously isn't that great. But the fact that that mechanism is there and it's got such a heavy chassis and that the pulling power will no doubt be excellent has really impressed me. Uh, I'm not saying, again, I'll reiterate, I'm not suggesting going out and buying something like this. But overall, this is really, at least, at the very least, interesting. At the very most, rather impressive. So, uh, whether this thing will still be working when I come back is another matter altogether. But I will allow this to run in and I will see you in a short while with some updates. Okay, see you in a minute. Okay folks, there we go, that is running in concluded. And you know what, I'm impressed. The Loco has sped up quite appreciably since you last saw it. Uh, yeah, it's now noticeably way faster than it was before, which suggests that maybe a drop of oil or a quick service could improve the performance even more. I'm not gonna do that in the review today because I've never done that up until now in reviews and just to be fair to other manufacturers who haven't had the luxury of a service during the review, I'm gonna wait until after the review until I do that. But yes, it is running a little bit better now in both directions, very, very smooth, no derail no slowing down on curves. It's really, really impressive. The pulling power is astonishing as well. I mean, it has got traction tires, but 1.2 newtons of tractive effort. That is absolutely crazy. About 65 coaches this should be able to manage. Absolutely shocking that uh, the traction tires are unnecessary though. It's a pity it's got those. Anyway, is the crawl any better now that the Loco is fully running and warmed up? Let's find out. Turning up, turning up. Can hear it humming. There it goes. Ah, uh, it just took off. Ah, uh, it looks as though it was going to, though. Let's try it backwards. Just easing it. Oh, a bit slower. So it's having trouble crawling. Uh, I think that's fair enough. I mean, um, it's easy to forget this is 30 pounds. I keep finding myself assuming this was hundreds and hundreds of pounds. For 30, this is not at all bad, but obviously it's not quite matching up to the much more expensive models, which suggests that you do kind of got, get what you pay for with those. Uh, a bit more maybe, come on. Oh, it's gonna take off, I can tell. The lights are getting brighter, yeah. So it's not a crawler by any means. Let's see if I can, let's see if I can get it to go. Let's see if I can get it to kick in and then turn it down. Let's see if that works. No, it's it's not got very much torque then, <laughs> that's fair to say. Uh, you do have to turn the controller quite a way up to get that 1.2 newtons of tractive effort there. But just to see how this can handle a load, I've got seven Orient Express coaches parked behind her there. Um, these are not very nice coaches. I think I think they might be Lima or Juf or something. Either way, they have the same coupling, so they are the choice. Let's go and get coupled to them and see what the performance is like under load. This should be very, very interesting. Here we go. Okay. Oh yeah, that really has zapped the torque. I had to turn it up quite a long way there to be able to push the coaches. Uh, it's not a huge deal, I suppose. Um, real locomotives would work that way, um, but in model form, that can suggest that perhaps an underpowered or poorer quality motor has been used. No way of knowing, though, without taking the thing to pieces, and I, I don't do that during the review, of course. Anyway, let's get it going then. I'm going to set it to 50% speed, see if it's any slower than it was running light. Here we go. It's a nice gradual acceleration, though. I'll give it that. No, that's a fair speed. So it seems, obviously, as you turn it up, the torque gets better which makes sense, that's good. In the meantime then, I'll show you what else I'm going to be running. I have another Italian Lima locomotive here. Let me bring it in. This is one of the Lima Blister range locomotives, and it was similarly cheap. It cost about 25 pounds. And to be honest with you, this is what I was expecting of today's locomotive because this one really is basic. So very, very plasticky, very light, only one driven bogey, static plastic pantographs that don't move, no windows or anything, so there's no interior. It really is just a blank body. No separately fitted details, really, just a few little bits. The Loco that I've looked at today is a, a huge step up from this. Mechanism, detail, whatever you like, much, much, much better, and much better value. It's really amazed me 
what can be done for such a low cost. I would say maybe the slow speed is a bit better on this though because it has a, a much simpler mechanism. But yeah, that's got a range of wagons coupled up to it. And then on the inside line, we have another AliExpress find, which I obviously, well, which obviously fits the theme of today's video. It is the AliExpress El Cheapo 040. And the shocking thing is, I think this was roughly the same kind of price. I can't really remember exactly what this cost. But yeah, think of how rubbish this thing is. Think of how basic it is. Think of the mechanism and then compare it to what we've seen today. Yeah. I'm not getting too carried away because it is partly useless in places, but some aspects of it are really quite impressive and remarkable for the price. All right, here it comes up Gordon's Hill. No problem with the speed and no noticeable slowdown either. So the fact that this is a reasonably good quality mechanism is showing through there. It's not bad for seven coaches. But the traction tyres mean that there won't, there won't be any wheel slip or anything, I suppose. But it's good to see that the mechanism isn't slowing down. Amazing, really. Can you imagine if this is how Hornby Railroad locos were? This level of detail, perhaps slightly better quality, a bit more expense perhaps, but this level of mechanism would be a way, way more compelling range if that was the case, wouldn't it? It is amazing how these pleasant surprises always come from the most unexpected of places. Who would have thought that this locomotive had the power to impress me? Seriously. You think it's always going to be Batman's latest steam locomotive or, I don't know, the latest big release. <laughs> but this is the most impressed I've been in quite some time. That's blossomed. That has blossomed into a lovely, lovely runner. Very good runner, that. Come on then, let's have some ratings for the Lima E424. Now, the level of detail, let's not beat about the bush here. It was naff, wasn't it? Very, very coarse detail, no cab details, no cabs at all for that matter. Yeah, it's very, very basic, you know, 40 year ago type quality. However, there were one or two details that made me want to add a little bit to the score. So I've given it 2.5 stars. I mean, the lights, that's a fantastic inclusion. You've got a couple of nice details, such as the separately fitted windscreen wipers. <laughs> Why we have such a premium feature on an otherwise very basic model, I don't know, but I quite like it. And there's some separately fitted metal parts, such as the buffers and the horns and the pantographs. So it's not absolutely terrible. The performance, while it is a lot better than expected at this kind of price point, if you think about it compared with other more expensive models, not absolutely amazing. I must say at the higher speeds, it's absolutely fine. No complaints at all. But at the slower end, it doesn't perform quite as well as some better locos. But for 30 pounds, that's not too bad. The pulling power is absolutely immense. Uh, 1.2 newtons of tractive effort. That's enough on straight and level track for 65 coaches. That's more than the Backman Class 37. That's more than the Helgen Class 52, more than the Hornby Class 56. British manufacturers, you have been showed up by this locomotive at this price. However, it's kind of cheating a little bit because it's got the traction tyres, so take that with a pinch of salt. The mechanism, now it's far, again, far, far better than I expected it to be. However, if I am doing this in a strictly comparative sense, which of course I am, I have to confess that the mechanism here wasn't absolutely fantastic. It is missing out quite a bit, so no DCC socket, it loses a bit for that. Uh, no bearings on the axles, I always knock off a bit for that. And I always knock off a start for traction tyres as well, so I've given it just 3.5 star. There is a lot to be commended in the mechanism though. I mean, the, the huge powerful motor with dual flywheels, that's amazing. All wheel pickup, all wheel drive. Yeah, there are some really, really nice aspects to this mechanism which have impressed and surprised me. The quality, obviously, I've had to reflect the poor build quality here. I do like the die-cast chassis, that was an unexpected surprise, but the way that the model has been moulded, uh, painted particularly, and fitted together leaves much to be desired with lots of paint bleed and glue marks as well, so it does have to get two star on quality. I can't bring myself to give it any more than that. Value for money though, for £30 or $42, this is absolutely amazing. I mean, on the second hand market, these go for over £100. I don't think they're available anymore at the price I paid, so it may well always be a mystery as to what happened here and how I managed to get this so cheap. But it does kind of show what can be done for such a small amount of money. Maybe we do get ripped off when we pay hundreds and hundreds of pounds for locos that are just a bit more detailed and better quality. It really is an eye-opener, isn't it? So there you go, 6.73 out of 10. Not bad considering, not bad considering this is a 30 quid locomotive. Let's put that into the logbook. 
There it is, 12th place above the Hornby A2-2 and below the Porter Slide Tank. Now I know that seems a little bit absurd putting this above the A2-2, but don't forget the A2-2 cost nearly six times what this one cost. And this one has problems, don't get me wrong, but that's reflected in the price. That is definitely not the case with the locomotives listed below this one in the logbook though. And therefore, yes, I do believe this cheap but very, very cheerful model deserves to trump them in the logbook there. So very, very good. Yeah, what a surprise that was. I had no idea this would be such an interesting model to review. Well, there you go then, folks. I hope you enjoyed that review. For the money, this is marvellous, isn't it? Absolutely incredible. It just shows that it's worth keeping a weather eye on AliExpress for the odd bargain. And don't get me wrong, sort of eight or nine times out of ten, you will end up with something like that 040, which is, you know, all right for what it costs, but nothing special. Occasionally, though, you do get the odd gem turn up, and it's those that make it worthwhile, in my opinion. So, yeah, do let me know down in the comments what you thought about this. Have you ever come across anything like this at this kind of price point? Would you buy something like this if it was available again at that price? Do let me know what you think. For now, though, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the video, as always, and I will see you again very, very soon. All right, cheers, folks. Take care.